the granddaddy of it all, man. This is the book of books for success. Strap in, this is it. Think and Grow Rich. Boom, let's go. Hey guys, it's me. Welcome to the channel, Sunny T. And this is the number one place for entrepreneurs on the planet, period. <laughs> Go ahead if you're new to the channel and click that subscribe button and hit the bell button if you want to get notifications. When I upload these videos, I upload frequently. Let's get right to it. Think and Grow Rich. This book was written by Napoleon Hill a long time ago, and I think it was like the 1930s. Don't get me to lying. I can't remember the exact date. And I wish I had the book here with me, but I, it's packed away right now because we're about to make a, a move. But this is one of my favorite books. And it really surprises me. A lot of entrepreneurs will ask me, like, what is your favorite book? I had an interview and I go, this thing can grow rich. And they go, man, I've heard that so many times and I've never read the book. And I'm like, dude, if you're already successful and you already kind of have this drive to do things, when you read Think and Grow Rich, there's two things that are going to happen for you if you're already on the path to your success or on your journey to success. It's going to validate a lot of things that you already knew, number one. And number two, it's going to give you ideas and things on how you can tighten that thing up. Because some things we don't know for sure on how things can be done. And this right here is the Bible to success. Everything that you hear all of the other gurus talking about, and I'm talking about Frank Kern, I'm talking about Todd Brown, I'm talking about Russell Brunson and these type of people in our space, the marketing space, they've all taken parts of this book and just broken it down so we can understand it. So the task of Napoleon Hill was to try to find out what is success? How do we achieve success? Is it duplicatable? And the answer is yes, but it took him years. And Andrew Carnegie was, he was it back then. He was, he had a monopoly on everything. And if you like took his money and put it in today's money, it was like $300 billion or something like that. Rockefeller, JP Morgan, and Andrew Carnegie were the guys that owned like 80% of the, the, the wealth in the United States of America back then. They were super powerful. They're the reason why we have monopoly laws now and why we had to break down Bill Gates because he was just getting to be too rich. Andrew Carnegie gave Napoleon Hill and said, listen, I want you to go interview out a whole bunch of people and you're not gonna be able to do this in a week. You're not gonna be able to do it in a weekend. It's gonna take you some years. And it took him 20 years. But the coolest thing was, is I, he's like, I'm gonna plug you in with all my homies. I'm gonna tell them to hook you up and, and you can go talk to them. So he hooked them up with the JP Morgans, the Rockefellers, so on and so forth. The Edisons of those days, Thomas Edison. And he gave him carte blanche with all his homeboys. 20 years later, Think and Grow Rich came out. And it's an amazing book. If you, if you haven't read it, you need to read it. I've always known the road to success. I've always known, man, you just gotta do the work. You gotta put your head down. You can't give up. I've known this and I'm like, where did I get this from? How did I know what success, what it takes to be successful? And I didn't remember, but it was a few years ago that I remember like, oh man, I read Think and Grow Rich when I was 20 years old. I was fortunate enough to have that seed planted in me when I was young, 18. And so I knew what it took. Knowing that key to success and understanding how to get it was one thing, but actually doing it was a whole different story. So I knew because I read the book, but I wasn't, and I just, I don't know, I kind of like read the book and I set it down. But what was really cool is it planted that seed and I knew that you need to stay focused. You gotta, you can't listen to what other people have to say. And I've always had inside of me this burning desire. And you, you don't know what that is until you wake up and you have it. But the way I try to make an analogy of this is you've all been swimming in a swimming pool if you know how to swim, or you've even been in your bathtub and you've swam to the bottom of the pool, but maybe you messed around a little bit too long and they go back up those 12 feet and you see the top and you're like, man, I got to get there because I just want to get some air. And you just, and you might feel like you're almost too late. And you're really trying to get there. Nancy got caught in the undertow out there. I remember my sister got caught in a riptide and the lifeguards had to get her. And she said she was just tumbling and tumbling and tumbling and tumbling in the water and couldn't come up. It's that. It's that need to breathe. Eric Thomas, and I really don't like that dude because he really hollers about a lot of stuff and I didn't, but he always used to say, you got to want it as much as you want to breathe, right? He would holler that out. Go look it up. You'll find it uh, on YouTube. But it's true. 
that burning desire for something. I don't know what it is for you. For me, that burning desire, I know that I'm meant for something bigger. I know that I want to have something more than what I have. And I've always been successful in anything that I've really tried because I had that key. I knew the combination for success. Finishing is one thing and knowing that you can't stop, you never stop and going every day was something that was got planted in me. And that burning desire is the first big idea they talk about in Think and Grow Rich. The second big idea, this is number two, is you gotta have faith. And we're not talking about, you know, faith in God and religious faith because that's the first thing we think about. We're talking about belief. This is something that I struggled with. Believing that you can accomplish what you have that burning desire for is hard to do, especially when you've never had it. So that's having faith that it's there. Here's what I wanna give you before I move on to number three. And I wanna tell you that in the world of money, what you're asking for is nothing. Kim Kardashian made, I don't know, it's like 12 million, $14 million in 23 minutes. Right now, her sister, I think it's Khloe Kardashian, is worth $1 billion. Who is it? It's Kylie, Kylie Jenner, and she's worth $1 billion. And I think she's 21, 22 years old or whatever it is. One of the youngest billionaires ever. So whatever it is that you're looking for, the money is there. The success is there. There's always things being discovered and there's always things that you can do to achieve your success. But you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe that it's possible for you to attain it. Number three, this is the third big idea in Think and Grow Rich. He talks about auto-suggestion. And this is just kind of training yourself to believe. Now, here's some woo-woo shit for you, man, and I'm telling you, this works in a positive way and it works in a negative way. You know if you have fertile ground, right? If you just have dirt, you can grow bad shit in that dirt or you can grow good shit in that dirt. In other words, you can throw something in there and grow weed, you can grow weeds, you can grow anything you want to in that dirt, or you can grow tomatoes, and you can grow something to eat. Well, your brain is the same way. Your brain is your brain, it's neutral. So you can put positive shit in your brain and it'll think positive for you, or you can have negative thoughts. And this is what's really beautiful about your brain. I think one of the biggest things that I learned for myself, we don't respect something that we get for free. And you were built with your brain, you got it for free. So you don't respect it as much as you can. But you need to understand this, it's not woo woo, your brain is very pow powerful. What they talk about in Think and Grow Rich is that you should visit your goals, write them down, be very specific with your goals. So here's how he breaks it down in the book. You need to be specific, you need to write down what it is you want, what it is you're willing to trade for that. So you have to give value in order to get what you want. You need to give value, and it's a ton of value, and you need to over deliver. He actually talks about that in the book as well. So what are you willing to trade for what it is that you want? Here's the really big thing though, the last one is, you need to be specific on when you want it. So that means I wanna make a million dollars by January 5th, 2020. Write down your goals and say, this is how I'm gonna attain that goal. You need to visit that once when you wake up in the morning and once before you go to bed. Once you visit those goals, and I'm telling you, it's something magic that happens. Right here, I have my journal. I visit my journal every morning. Sometimes I skip days, but I visit my goals every day. Grant Cardone, I heard this first from Grant Cardone before I actually like went back and read Think and Grow Rich. And when he said that, I'm like, man, that's monkey business. But it's true. <laughs> visit your goals, man. Look at them. People put them on their refrigerator. People put them on their, on their mirror in the morning when they wake up. Now, I've seen a lot of people do that and they got their goals sitting up there and they never work at them. The paper's all curled up from the steam in the shower, it, the, the paper's bleeding with ink, and they just kind of forgot about it. No, really visit your goals, read them out loud, remind yourself what you're doing this for. What are you trying to accomplish? This is serious business, man. So you need to visit those goals and start to get at them every day. The next big idea they talk about is having imagination. And that just boils down to being creative. Now, I always never, I never thought that I was creative. I used to tell Nancy all the time, I'm not a creative guy because I'm thinking about Van Gogh creative. I'm thinking I have to be an artist, but that's not what we're talking about. Here's where entrepreneurs and successful people and the pioneers, the Elon Musk of the world, here's where they live. They live at I wonder if. 
I want you to take those three words right there and really think about that. I wonder if. Now here, you've already thought about this. So let's just do it with a simple thing like toast. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna get, get you a new toaster. We're gonna bring it to your house. And I'm gonna say, hey man, I want some toast. I wonder how he likes his toast. All right, so you start asking questions. You get creative. Well, Sonny, how do you like your, well, I want it with butter. I wonder if he'll feel like it with jelly. Try it and see. That's a really simple explanation. And that's, I really simplified it, but that's where you need to live. I wonder if nothing stays at its default. You get a new camera, play with it. You get a new piece of software and it does something for you, play with the defaults. Never leave things at its default. Always be creative. Take it too far and then dial it back. Take it too far back and then dial it back in. Nancy has a thing she does, what we call focus up. When she focuses in behind the camera, she takes it too far frontwards, she takes it too far in the back, and then she takes it too far back again and she brings it back right in the middle and gives me room enough so I won't be out of focus. If I put my hand here, it's out of focus. If I put it back too far back here, it's out of focus. But in order for her to find that sweet spot, she had to say, I wonder if. And that's where success lives, right there. Having that imagination, being creative, is dollar signs. The big idea number five is organized planning. And this now you can start to see how this is all coming together. So now once we have all of these things lined up, we believe in ourselves, we know it can happen, we have that burning desire, we have a plan, we've written down our goals and we know how we're gonna attack that goal, we need to organize it all because now it's all overwhelming, right? I hate when people say that, but it's just true. You're trying to figure out where do I start? And so either I'm gonna flash this on the screen or either I'm gonna jump right into my computer right now and show you how it works. But I learned this actually from Frank Kern when I see it written down, I call it myself, has cheeseburger, no cheeseburger has cheeseburger. It's called the escape and the arrival, right? And what that is is you draw two circles on either side of a piece of paper. You draw a line between those circles and then you just put notches and those notches in the middle of those two circles are your path from no cheeseburger to having a cheeseburger. Now, you're gonna ask yourself, Sonny, what the fuck does this have to do with cheeseburgers? And I'm gonna tell you right now how it works. Let's take our circle over here and we don't have a cheeseburger and we want one. Here's the cheeseburger. The first thing we need to do is we need to say, how do we want a cheeseburger? What cheeseburger do we want? And we need to figure out, are there cheeseburgers around? So let's go to Google first. That's line number one. Line number two is, now that we've Googled it, we need to get directions. Let's get those directions. Number three, we need to get in the car, find our car keys and get in the car. Number four, we need to actually drive, the, follow the directions that, we've get, that we got. Number six, we need to get to the cheeseburger joint, go order it. Number seven, we need to eat it. We just went from no cheeseburgers to has cheeseburgers and those milestones in the middle are how you're gonna have organized planning. There's a North Star going on here. So back in the day, it was kind of a straight line like this going right on to success. But we don't work that way now. There's so many different options and things that we can do. The, the road, Nancy showed me a meme one day that the road to success looks like this. Most people think that it's like this, but it kind of <laughs> goes this way. But the, the key thing here is that you have a North Star. The key thing is that you understand exactly where it is you want to go and that you might veer to the left, you might veer to the right a little bit, but the thing is that you're heading in that same direction to where you want to go to right? Revisit your goals. Maybe you might have to change a few things. And this is one thing that's going to happen to you for sure. In your journey for success in entrepreneurship, whatever you're doing, you're going to find out things that you don't like. It's testing. There's no such thing as failure here. You're only going to learn what you like and what you don't like. Keep recording that data. Life is full of data. It's just getting in, data entry into your brain, figuring out what you like, what you don't like, Things will change. I want to make this million dollars, but I don't want to sell a million widgets every day. I want to sell one person one thing for a million dollars. Let me work at that. Now that might take me five years, but okay, that's cool. I'm going to bug this one person every day for five years, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get in his good graces. That's my plan. I'm sticking to it. Lego. But maybe you say to yourself, man, this sucks. I need to have some type of small successes. I need small wins. I need to build some confidence up. 
Let me start selling at least two grand stuff, three grand stuff, four grand stuff. I've had a lot of little contracts I could have gotten along the way that I passed up. I'm going to start taking some of those contracts. Doesn't mean you gave up on your goals. It just means you decided to get there a different way. Big idea number six. Now we've written down the goals. What is the biggest enemy of all of this? Procrastination. Oh my God. And I was so guilty of this as a youngin. But because I read Think and Grow Rich at 20 years old, I have always been one quick to pull the trigger on a lot of stuff. Nancy knows this to be true. When I first met Nancy, we were making online websites and we would make an online website in 12 hours. And back then that was a lot of work because we had to build it all by, you know, by hand, I guess you would call it back then. There was a little tool called Dreamweaver and we had to build those websites out, we had to put all this in. Some of them we had to actually write out the HTML but I would get it done in 10 or 12 hours to build these things out. I'm quick to pull the trigger. Here's the thing that my mistake was though. I was also too quick to quit when I wasn't getting that fast feedback. Now here's what they say in the book. You need to be very fast to pull the trigger, but slow to change your lane. Don't change lanes so fast. You got to give it time to kick in. Here's what I've learned over the last three years and it's served me well. I say in internet time, but it's with anything. Everything has a delay. So I want you to imagine that when you start doing something, you're not going to start seeing any benefits for like a year. Tell that in your head. You'll see it before then, but tell yourself, I'm not going to see any money. I'm not going to see any success. And I'm going to have to keep doing this for a year before I get any recognition whatsoever. And during that time, you will start getting feedback. You'll start getting data and you'll start getting that instant gratification that you want, but it slowly comes in. And before you change your mind, give your test enough time to work. And if it doesn't work, then you swerve a little bit and move in a different direction. And you'll start to see that stuff happen little by little. But the only thing that's going to beat procrastination is action. Persistence. This is what this channel is all about. Every day, no excuses, no explanations. Get it done. That's what this channel is about, man. I get so passionate about that because every time you listen to successful people, and I'm kind of like your modern day Napoleon Hill. This is what I stand for. I didn't realize until just now. But I listen to people talk like Jamie Foxx and Floyd Mayweather. There was an Olympic guy that did an interview named Michael Phelps. Rick Ross did something recently on Snapchat and it got all over the internet. And he was like, yeah, man, if you really want to get this Ferrari, man, it's just one day's work, man. All you got to do, man, is get one of your homeboys, man, and y'all get out every day and then go, blow. hold on, slow down, Rick. There that word is. Every day, persistence. You can't stop. But if you listen to celebrities, they go over it. And I always say celebrities because that's what we watch on TMZ. When you finally get to get a dime or just a little bit of game out of Denzel Washington, when you finally get to see an interview with Hugh Hefner when he was alive or with Mike Tyson or with Floyd Mayweather, when you finally get to hear them, they're so fast to gloss over that every day, man. They just skip over it. A few people that are in my tribe recognized it one day and they go, Sonny, you're right, man. They say it so fast because it's so as a matter of fact for them. It's so normal for them. Why would you do anything less than every day? <laughs> every day? Like, yeah, that's like common knowledge, right? Well, not to us, it's not. Persistence, man. You got to stay at it. You can't stop. And that's one thing that I got out of the book years ago when I was 20 years old. Don't stop. Never quit. Keep going. And there's no excuses, man. If you own it, you have to own it. No excuses, no explanations. Why didn't you do your videos yesterday? Because I was a fucking dumbass and I didn't do the videos. That's your answer. Not because it was raining outside, because there's no excuses. Shoot them in your car, right? Shoot them inside your house, right? It was thundering and lightning out there. Well, shoot the thunder and lightning in. Why didn't you do your work? Own it, get it done. And that's when you start to see what they're doing now. They started off with kind of positive things and now they're talking about negative things now. And they're talking about if you procrastinate, this is what's going to kill everything we've built up through the entire book. This is what's going on with Think and Grow Rich and it's an awesome book so far. Big idea number eight is something that I need to do right now myself and that's the mastermind. And they talk about, um, you've heard other people talk about how you are the sum of the most five, the five closest friends that you have. 
right? Everybody that you hang around, you're a product of that. So if you hang around people that are procrastinating, if you hang around people that drink too much, if you hang around people that are reckless with their time and who they hang out with, you have to guard your time and you have to guard who you hang out with. Most importantly, you have to guard your energy. Nancy is the keeper of the gate. She will not let negative shit get into my realm because she knows how much energy I'll expend on something that doesn't deserve my time. The other day, someone sent me something in the messenger and she was livid. She's like, man, I keep you protected from that type of thing. And why is he sending you this stuff? I don't want you going through negative stuff because you'll waste valuable time talking about it. That's a flaw of mine. She knows it. So she tries to keep me away from that. Now, you may not have a mastermind right now, but just start with one person. Guard your energy. Somebody you click with that it could be somebody on the internet and meet twice a week is what the book suggests and get together and go over ideas and keep each other accountable. Accountability works, man. Whether you like it or not, give you a story. I have been smoking in my thirties. And I told my friend, I've been talking about this whole video, David, that I was going to stop smoking. And I told him that I did stop smoking. There came a time that I had to go to his house and stay for a few months. And I did not want him knowing that I hadn't quit smoking. Wouldn't you know that I quit that accountability? He even did, he didn't even know he was holding me accountable. Get yourself into a mastermind and masterminding is powerful, man. I've got one guy I talked to on the phone. He's in Chicago, friend of mine. And we would get on the phone for hours and mastermind and talk about traffic, social media, ideas, what we can do, what we can't do. And it's just a really good mastermind to hold each other accountable about what we should be doing in the future. And if you meet twice a week, you get to say, hey, did you ever do that? Start by watching videos. Right now you're in a mastermind. You're figuring things out, write what you find good in this video and then visit my videos often and then start to find people that think like you watch people that are commenting on the videos. Perhaps they think like you, maybe they're rising to success at the same time as you start collaborating with people, find a digital mastermind if you have to and meet with them twice a week. So nine and 10, I'm going to stick together because this is a really important big idea. And that is the power of positive thoughts. Positive thinking or negative thinking has a way of creeping into your life and shit will happen. I have negative stories. I remember when I was a kid going, man, I don't want to get pulled over the cops. I don't want to get pulled over by the cops. I was a uh, drunk driving or maybe I had come from a, a party and I was swerving a little bit, maybe a little tipsy. And because I was so concentrated on what could happen, sure enough, I got pulled over because I started making mistakes because I was so nervous about not making mistakes and I started making mistakes. When you keep your mind on negative things, they find a way to come into fruition and creep into your life. Now that's the negative shit. How about the positive stuff? How about when you start doing positive things, those things start coming into fruition. Those positive thoughts that you have, Train yourself to have positive thoughts. Another book that I read that I'm going to do a book summary on here shortly, so make sure you subscribe is Seven Habits of Highly Successful People by Stephen Covey. And in that book, it talks about paradigm shifts and how you perceive things that have happened in your life. If you own everything, and I mean really own it, and say it's totally my fault why this happened, and then you take that data and you say, I'm going to figure out how to make something good out of this. The fact that you could do that and say, hey man, I totally fell and busted my butt. Well, if I would have ran, wore non stickum shoes and put some knee pads on, then I wouldn't be all scuffed up right now. So you take that data, you buy the shoes, you buy the knee pads, and now you took a negative thing and turned it into something positive. And you can even tell the story. Say, hey man, look, I already been down that hill. You need to go buy some shoes and some knee pads. This is how you take negative situations and turn them to take control, own them and turn them into positivity. It's how I do it all the time. I actually make content. As soon as something negative happens in my life, I'll turn it around and make a lesson out of it. I'll turn it into content. I will not let negative shit stay in my realm. I get past it really fast and I find a way. 
I don't know, it was about three months ago, no, a month ago, exactly, a month exactly almost ago, I sat down and I complained about everything that I've been meaning to complain about for a year maybe. At the end of that complaint session, automatically like clockwork, I ended it with positive shit and how I can turn it around. The paradigm shift is really important. Don't pay attention to what other people say about your circumstances. Somebody might think what you've done is a failure. That's nothing more than data for you. Don't feed into that. Make changes for yourself and keep it moving. The power of thinking is incredible, man. It sounds like some woo-woo shit, but I promise you it's not. Right now is the time I'm gonna tell you to like this video. If you dug the video, smash that like button for me, man. Subscribe, comment below and tell me what you thought about this summary. Do you think I need to do more like this? And share this video with a friend, man, somebody that needs to read this book. I promise you this is an awesome book. Make sure you buy the book. Success is an everyday thing. Be persistent, no excuses, no explanations. Let's get it done.